So do we get mad at all about the heart palpitations in the third period? Or Hunter had five assists, O'Reilly had a hat trick. Yeah, it just seemed like they were gonna- Hunter had five assists and O'Reilly had a hat trick! Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What the- Not nice! There's a giant hat! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these, I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. I think the second line can stay. I think, is it the second line? Is Austin Matthews on the first line? I have questions, Ziggy. Leafs win! Five to nothing! That's how I choose to remember. Six nothing! Because O'Reilly got the empty netter, you see. It was six three. Over the Buffalo Sabres in an alleged road game. Enormous night for Ryan O'Reilly. Literally the best night he's ever had in Buffalo as a professional hockey player. So let's talk about it. Think you know which way it's gonna go? I did, and then I didn't, and then I did again. You can make your bet at Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports and baseballs coming back, and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn and download the Sports Interaction app, but only if you're 19 plus, please play responsibly. Well, gosh! You know, producer Drew, who is back from Salt Lake City and back to editing LFR videos, asked me a question. It's 5 nothing, and he goes, we want a Sabres comeback, right? Now he asked me that for a couple reasons. Number one, when the Leafs were up 5 nothing, he put money on the Sabres, and he was trying to speak it into existence. It doesn't work that way, Drusif. Sometimes it does. It doesn't work that way. But he was also asking, cause can you imagine if after Leafs fans packed that barn and were doing the wave, they blew up five the top of my skull and brain would actually blow off of my cranium. The video would get 500,000 views and you would see a grown man get taken to hospital live on camera. So what would I prefer? My sanity. Always my sanity. I get so bothered when people say, oh, you just want them to lose for the views. What are you talking about? This entire YouTube channel has been a 16 year cry for help. I wanted them to win. And they did. So what happened last game? A lot of people got very upset at the Toronto Maple Leafs for not playing very well against the Chicago Blackhawks at all and losing. And I decided to throw a little curveball in there, a little swerve, and give him a break. Second half of a back-to-back, -back, it's been a busy few days, the goalie was pooping his pants, yada yada. So what about this one? Well, let's start with the first. The Leafs and a solid quarter of the entire fan base show up in Buffalo. A common criticism is the Leafs don't show up on time. Ah! They showed up on time and the Sabres weren't prepared. The second line, the alleged second line, with Marner on the right, O'Reilly in the middle, and John Tavares hilariously on the wing. Do we like that? I don't know. We can't decide heading into this game if we like it. Marner to O'Reilly for his first goal as a Leaf and immediately I like it. The man who uses a stale beaver tail as a stick blade gets his first as a leaf. Grab that puck. Or just throw it away because it's gonna be the first of many. Because he's fed. He's in alone on the back end. Score! He uses the back end of that abomination of a hockey stick. Yes, I'm gonna keep calling it an abomination of a hockey stick, but it's our abomination of a hockey stick and it's do nothing. There's a battle in front. Marner's involved. Are you shot? O'Reilly gets a whack at it, sends it to John Tavares. Snipe! I lost my mind because I saw the nine and a left-handed shot score. I thought it was O'Reilly with a hat trick. But I like you too, John. Three nothing and I would say that line is pretty good. What about the... First line, Morgan Riley feeds Michael Bunting. Morgan Riley has been low-key very good offensively lately. Michael Bunting, snipe! And all of a sudden, Ukebeka Lukinen, Jesse Blake's Stanley Cup finalist goalie in a video game, gets pulled. You know what's funny? Heading into this game, I saw that he had a 14-7-2 record, and I was like, wow, that's really good. And I saw that he had an 898 save percentage, and I'm like, those two things don't match at all. Seeing those two numbers beside each other made me wonder why the Sabres haven't gone out and got a goalie. Because right now the Sabres are flirting with the playoff spot, but they should have gone on like a long courtship, proposed, had an engagement party, gone to a wedding, gotten married. Because the Sabres are like flirting with the playoff spot right now, but if they had a little bit of goaltending, they could have like gone on a long courtship courtship and had a wedding and an entire family by now! I know their cupboard's looking pretty good, but they got they got an opportunity this year. Why don't they go out and get Karel Vimelka? Thinks about how Karel Vimelka plays against the Leafs. Actually, how about if you didn't? Anyway, all that to say, the Leafs are up for nothing in like 12 minutes! And if that sounds ridiculous, that's because it is! From NHL Public Relations, the Maple Leafs netted four goals through the first 12 minutes and nine seconds of play, their fastest four goals from the start of a road game since they set the club benchmark more than 33 years ago 
also in Buffalo. That record was in 1989. They had four goals in eight minutes and 17 seconds. And knowing what I know about 80s hockey, I'm surprised it wasn't like just four minutes. Leafs dominate, utterly dominate. The, the Tavares, the O'Reilly, whatever, whatever you want to call that line dominate. Leafs outshoot the Sabres 15 to 8, but it seemed pretty obvious that the Leafs had already taken their foot off the gas by the end of the first. Sabres got like half of the shots that they got in that period in the final two minutes? The Leafs had three goals before the Sabres had a shot. Granado took a timeout. To head to intermission, it gets a little better. Sabres actually outshoot the Leafs in the second period, 11 to eight. Sabres also proceed to take the game's first penalty by tripping TJ Brody. And then this goal, th Th this is a mauling. I'm going to tell you what happened. Barner in front to Tavares. Morris tries to shovel it in, but he can't, but there's a rebound. Willie on the rebound. Doesn't go in, hits a half wall. Morris goes in against it. Somehow gets it Austin Matthews. Finds a wide open Mitch Marner. Dangles. He's a behind for Tavares. Get a pass. Take a little pass to Willie. Roof. Morgan Riley chilling back there like, great job, fellas. I, I like that. That was great to watch. A mauling. An actual mauling. Five nothing. And the fans are rabid. They began the third period five nothing. Dominating toying with their food. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I've made the decision. I made the decision to not be mad a little bit. I just to not be mad about the Leafs allowing the Sabres to make it 5-3. Okay, I'm a little mad. I was, I was a lot mad at the time. I'm sitting there in front of the TV, my heart rate is elevated, it shouldn't be elevated. I should be like an amphibian in the winter. I should just be like slowly until there's basically no pulse and I'm just hibernating. But I'm just sitting there, heart rate elevated, seething at my team having a two goal lead with it were late in the third period. That shouldn't be stressful at all. That should be a vacation. But, and I'm not making an excuse for these guys, not at all. But again, consider the circumstances. We talked about how on Sunday that, that was exhausting, like a genuinely exhausting weekend. No wonder they had nothing left in the tank in Chicago and they still erased a 3-1 deficit in a game where Samsonov looked terrible. But in this one, it's three games and four nights on the road. All that stuff from before still applies and Samsonov looked terrible, which we'll get to later. I was getting pretty mad. I was getting pretty mad that the Leafs even made me feel insecure at all. And then Ryan O'Reilly, like a low-key Gronk empty netter somehow, like just battling for it, willed himself and just used that stupid stick. God, I love it. Oh, you've grown on me so much already, Ryan. Someone asked me last video if I was going to let it go about Ryan O'Reilly's stupid stick now that he's on the Leafs. Absolutely not. I'm just going to highlight it more. You can't make it illegal. He's already won a cup with it. Ha! But he gets the hat trick. Hats rain down in Buffalo. Look how happy John Tavares is and how very unhappy that Sabres fan is. He knew he was on TV. He knew. Sabres fans like LMAO, that guy is my hero. Sounding like Shelbyville having a warm glass of turnip juice. O'Reilly, hat trick. Tavares, four point night. Marner, five assists. He ends the night with 51 on the season. That's a good win. A win in which, let's be honest, they did not try after they made it 5 nothing. That, that There's a bad aspect of that. You should probably try. It's the National Hockey League. Teams can erase even a 5 nothing deficit. I've seen it happen. I've actually seen the Leafs blow a 5 nothing deficit. That makes me upset. It was against the St. Louis Blues and his vengeance we stole Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley. Oh no. Oh no. Drew, leave it in. I gotta wear it. I gotta wear it. Ryan O'Reilly. I'm gonna make that mistake so many times. Steve, how can you make that mistake? I talk very fast. Oh, we edit these. I can edit that, but I'm not going to because I'm not a coward. Morgan O'Reilly looked great. And my favorite stat. He has never had <laughs> a multi... <laughs> This dude was a member of the Buffalo Sabres for three seasons. He never had a multi-goal game. First game back there as a Leaf, Hattie. Hanging in the Louvre, hanging in the ROM, hanging wherever you need to. That's beautiful. But dude, you can't give a thousand million percent all the time in the regular season. In the, in the playoffs, yes, you can. You have to. You have no other choice. In February, a game where you're up 5 nothing. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm not surprised they took their foot off the gas. And at very least, they didn't pay for it. Question. Will Luke Shen make his return to Toronto? What, do the Canucks have a game here or what? No, it's funny. Like, Connor Timmons looked bad 
in a game where the Leafs completely dominated the other team. And that's bad. Like, it's funny. Sheldon Keefe referenced the two penalties Connor Timmins took in a game recently as part of the reason why he was getting taken out of the lineup. And I was like, well, that's ridiculous because for almost all of the season, he's had just one penalty. And then he takes another penalty in this one. It's almost like the pressure of him potentially getting a roster spot, potentially being a game one player for the Leafs once they hit the playoffs. It's almost like the pressure is getting to him and he's... Played some of his worst hockey as a Leaf recently. I'm not writing the guy off. He's extended for two years and I'm extremely happy about it, but he hasn't looked great. It's not like Hall had a great game either. And getting Luke Shen, well, Shen would probably replace one or both of those guys. And when it comes to the playoffs, it's less about the Leafs getting bullied by the other team and more about they don't do it enough to the other team. It's hockey. It's still a contact sport and Luke Shen loves to throw that body and buy... Game six, game seven, if it's necessary, you need a guy who spent the previous five, six games softening up the other team. Plus, like, come on, who's not cheering for that story? I was in a group chat with producer Nick. He said, unfinished business. Mm -hmm. Yes! Are we still confident about the Leaf goalie tandem as we were in the first half of the season? Well, when it comes to Matt Murray, he wasn't playing well and then he went on IR, so it's kind of hard to judge him. But I have full confidence in Joseph Wool. I think that's an NHL goalie already, based off what we've seen, based off what uh, he was in the AHL. I don't think this is a repeat of Garrett Sparks, not even close. So like, just watch the guy, watch his, watch his technique, how he makes saves. I really like Joseph Wall. I think he could be a full-time NHL goalie as soon as this season, if injuries call for it, but definitely next season. That's not what you're asking about. You're asking about Murray and Samsonov. Listen, Samsonov's had a bad last couple games. He was brutal in Chicago, but he had the poops. And in this game... I have to wonder if he's recovered from the poops. Like, dude, oh, Tuck's a great shooter, and Skinner's a great shooter, and yeah, it's the show. There's lots of great shooters. Make a save. Again, Murray's on LTIR. You're gonna have a long runway here. Gotta make some saves. Did the Leafs let the Sabres back in to get them to pull the goalie so O'Reilly could get the hat trick? Yeah. 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 And this last one isn't a question. It's just uh, my, my fantasy team. I picked up O'Reilly the night he was traded at like 2.30 in the morning. I'm super happy about it. Actually, I do want to discuss this because it does relate to the Luke Shen question. After I'm pretty sure he said the opposite like two days ago, Sheldon Keefe said, I still feel at the end of the day, we're going to have John back at center. John being the only guy in the Leafs named John Tavares. Now, that's probably the right call, even though that line was preposterous. I mean, here's the good news. That line works so well that you know you can go back to it. And Achari's been great on the fourth line, but it almost feels like the Leafs are rolling out two first lines and two fourths. Like, two good fourths. Legit. But you have a middle of Matthews, Tavares, O'Reilly. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. But then, who's on those wings? Like, for example, like we're leaving Bunting on the top line. He's playing much better since I, you know, did... Did my little scolding. I like that he's playing better, making me look a little silly. Good. He's on the team I cheer for. That's great. Then does Yarn Croak go back with Tavares and, me and Marner? And yeah, that makes sense. But then, okay, who's O'Reilly playing with then? Willie? Well, no, you're probably, you're probably keeping him with Matthews. Uh, Bunting? Well, no, you're probably keeping him with Matthews. So, like, Engvall and... You make camp a winger? I mean, they're all pretty defensive. I don't know if they'll ever score. This is kind of why I feel like the next move could involve a winger coming to the team. And a lot of people are going to yell and scream, Matthew Nyes. I mean, that's still a rookie. He's never played a game of professional hockey in his life. And that's a lot to put on a kid. But it's also giving him a pretty soft landing because he's going to play with one of Matthews, Tavares, or O'Reilly. What do you think? Load up that line, it played well, keep it together, or do the three-headed monster up the middle? Ah, four. Achari's good. It's four. Shush. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Leafs play Minnesota on Friday. I'll be uploading the LFR on the Saturday morning. And Ryan O'Reilly is a Leaf!